All right, my name is David Warner. Um, I try to be as active as possible. So here's my contact information, work for Catapult, blog, vlog. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. So today, for my demo, we're going to talk about library components, specifically optimized bundling. So for those that are not as familiar with the library components yet, we'll have a brief overview just so you have a good awareness uh, and context for what they can provide. And then we'll take a look at some of the awareness and gotchas that you'll need to know when you're building it, right? Specifically, how much you load it up with. So with that in mind, we'll see how we can optimize the, the bundling of our SharePoint library for the best page performance when our web parts or extensions use them. All right, so what are SharePoint library components? Uh, it's the ability to package up using the SharePoint framework, third-party libraries or custom functionality within a hosted library component within our SharePoint tenancy. So for example, in this demo, we could include in our library jQuery or Moment. They're both fairly large libraries. We're including them in this demo for that purpose, but they're also pretty popular. The, the middle icon here represents maybe perhaps custom functionality that we would uh, use across our tenancy, maybe for our organization. Uh, that's custom to us, but we use it across a lot of web parts or extensions. And so you can put them into a singular package file that we can see down here that can be deployed just like we would an extension or a library, uh, or excuse me, an extension or a web part, and access it from those extensions and web parts. So in the end, what benefit does it provide? Well, within a SharePoint site collection, for example, here on the left, we have our SharePoint page, and these little boxes here may represent our web parts or an extension or something like that, and they may need to access our library. So typically, these would be bundled directly within our web part or extension, or we would reference them externally. So maybe that would be in a CDN we don't own, maybe it's in a SharePoint library that could accidentally be deleted. Um, this allows us to package it all up and have it stored in our SharePoint tenancy, available for all site collections and available to all web parts and extensions we build. And so uh, they are loaded once on a page, and that's a huge benefit. So multiple web parts on a page can access the component, which is only loaded once. So that's exciting, right? So we want to go load it up. And so we go and we start learning more about libraries. Uh, there's some great documentation and tutorials on how to do that. So then we start pumping it full of functionality. And then we pump full of more functionality. And before you know it, we've overloaded it with functionality. And that can make it a little big. So to maybe provide another illustration, uh, is there any Wreck-It Ralph fans that are on the call today. If you remember, if you're a parent or you like Wreck-It Ralph, uh, in the last movie, at the end of the movie, uh, Ralph, the hero, was playing a little video game and he was inside of it. And he had bunnies that he had to feed, or a bunny that he had to feed pancakes to. So imagine if that bunny were our library, and imagine if those pancakes were our custom features. And so then we just start loading it up and loading it up and loading it up. And then eventually, what does it look like? Well, it's a little big. It's hard to keep filling. And if you make it that big and that gets loaded on the page, our user's experience is going to result in ah, yelling and screaming, and they're going to be uh, shocked, and it's not a good thing, right? So we want to see how we can optimize the bundling. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at non-optimized bundling and, and why you might want to optimize the bundling. And, and you'll see what that means because we're going to put them into separate JS files in the bundle. All right. Let's dive in. So to set the context here, I've scaffolded out two different libraries. Uh, one is a non-optimized bundling library, and one is an optimized bundling. Uh, over here, I've just simply got a DOS command prompt open to that non-optimized, because we'll start there. And here are our two libraries. So we'll start with the non-optimized and just kind of look to see what's included. So we'll open it up, and we've simply just imported the three things that we identified in our slides, jQuery, Moment, and we created a couple of simple functions here for an alert and a console log. Nothing very complex, about as simple as you can get. And using the template tutorial that is available for the Microsoft documentation, we just return these uh, inside of functions, or in this case, actually do work inside the functions. And so if we go into the non-optimized bundling, we'll want to bundle these. Right, And so I'm going to go ahead and kick off the gulp bundling bundle, and we'll do it with a dash dash ship to get a good representation of what it would be like in production. Now, I've already pre-bundled these this morning just for sake of time. And we can see that our bundle here is 355K. Right, And so that's pretty large. Imagine if your web parts or extension only needed to access one of these two guys, just want to write something to the console log, and just want to alert, provide an alert on the page. but 
because we've also included moment in jQuery, well, now we have to pull down the entire bundle, like it or not, right? You get what you get, you don't throw a fit. It's kind of that scenario. But there is a better way. So let's look at the optimized bundling. I'll go ahead and close that, open up the optimized bundling, close this. Uh, the first thing you may see is we have more TypeScript files. So I've uh, separated out into each sep TypeScript file uh, what it is that we want to have done. Here's our console and alert. Here's our jQuery, uh, similar to the exact same functionality that we saw. Uh, but now this time, instead of just simply returning them, close this, we're using some async and await properties on our uh, functions to provide that information back to our web parts and our um, back to our web and extensions. So if we go back up to our PNP demo, we'll go into optimized bundling. And uh, let's go back into our distribution file. And I won't rebundle here uh, just because of sake of time. I want to leave plenty of time for the other demo. Uh, but you can see now, when I bundled this this morning, instead of one big bundle file, uh, we actually have separate bundle files, right? So I can tell just by the size that this 2.2 is my custom functions, right? They are very small. Uh, if I open up my custom functions here, close it, we can see it's the just two small functions that do two very simple things. That is only one kilobyte. And then I can tell just by knowing jQuery is 88K and moment is 267K. So if I wanted to now pull in just this functionality to my web part or extension, I'm not having to load all this other stuff with it. I can literally just pull in this singular item, uh, this singular import custom functions TS and this class and the functions that are available in it. And that's only going to be a payload at runtime of one kilobyte, right? So let's see what that looks like on an actual web part. Uh, I've got uh, a web part set up here. I'm not going to go in how you consume that. There, There is um, information on the documentation on how to consume from a library. Um, I just kind of want to show the payoff here. So I've set up a simple web part that allows us to import the various pieces that I just identified. I've preloaded the library in my tenant, and I've preloaded this web part in my tenant with buttons that will import each individual one. So keep an eye down here. I've uh, scoped or filtered my network panel to Pop Warner, so that way it only shows what is going to be served up from my actual site here, from my tenant. And so we're going to go through and kind of import each of these individually. So we'll start with jQuery. So you can see, bam, I've actually used jQuery in this instance to not only load it, but then update this little panel right here. And you can see that that was the only thing that was loaded, was the 1.1, which is where the jQuery library is included. So now we know there's an alert on the custom functionality. We see it's called my alert. We see that right here. And we see that 2.2 was called in at only 1.1k. Uh, so now we benefit there. And then moment. Now, if uh, anyone saw my tweet before the call, I had mentioned that I was going to give a sneak preview of the next great superhero if you're excited about Avengers. So that moment has come, the moment you're all waiting for or dreading, one of the two. So we'll go ahead and import moment. And oh, who would have known it? Parker, the next Avenger, Operation PNP, right? But we've imported moment right here, and we can see that being pulled in at 0.0, .0 and we were able to utilize it right here, right? So we show the actual time. That was the exact moment that Parker became the next Avenger. So very cool stuff. Um, it really opens up the ability to utilize library components, but I have to create a million if you don't want. If you want to create one library component that includes a lot of functionality so it's easier to maintain, uh, then you can optimize the bundling of it. So go build some libraries, go optimize your bundling, and see Parker in theater soon. And I'll just leave you with one last slide. Uh, there is a ton of links here. I'm going to include them in the blog uh, post that I make, uh, but there's the overview, there's the tutorial, uh, and there's the PNP repo that is now available. And a lot of other community people have been creating some fantastic stuff. Sergey, Sergey has created a, a really good blog. Vardaman has a really good sample here, so these guys are awesome. Check them out as well. Um, and thank you, Vesa. He just pasted in the sample that was just uploaded that you saw today is available in the GitHub repo now for you to go check out and play with and add to or modify. So thank you, guys. Great stuff. Thank you, David, for that. Always excited to see a new Avenger appear.